Chapter 18 Inner Storms and Outer Storms Creative Quote Unquote Destruction The Length of the Day and the Natural Reach of a Biologically Based Consciousness Your reality exists independently of your physically oriented consciousness, but while you are a creature, your awareness must be interpreted through your neurological structure and your corporeal aliveness. There are indeed various kinds of memory, so that the right information can be at your fingertips when you need it. Other data will seldom be required consciously, yet it must always be available to unconscious portions of the self. Biologically, the reach and capacity of your physically oriented consciousness is directly connected with the length of your days and nights, and of course with the seasons. Physically speaking, there are chemical interactions when thought occurs, and memories ride on the chemical's smooth flow. With the precise night and day schedule that it possesses, your planet would, in those terms, give birth to a creature consciousness uniquely suited to fit it. In other terms, the night and day represent the innate rhythms of your consciousness physically materialized through natural phenomena, for you are not yet equipped to perceive longer duration days. Your nervous system would find great difficulty in a rhythm in which a day was stretched out to be three or four times as long, for instance. The rhythms of your body and your consciousness follow the patterns of your planet. The planet itself is composed of atoms and molecules, each with their own kind of consciousness, however, and in the gestalt and cumulative cooperative organizations of their nature, the physical structure is formed out of consciousness. As this formation took place, there was a constant give-and-take between interior and exterior realities in your terms. The growth of feelings, sensations, I amness, concepts and beliefs was paralleled by the resulting exterior manifestations of animal species and mineral and vegetable emergences. With these came the growth of complementary neurological structures and the precise physical formations, such as mountains, valleys, seas, and so forth, needed to sustain them. In greater terms, all of these events occur simultaneously. To make this easier to understand, however, I am talking in terms of your time. Your feelings are as natural a part of the environment as trees are. They have a great effect upon the weather. There are even connections that can be made, for instance, between epilepsy and earthquakes, where great energy and instability come together, affecting the physical properties of the earth. Beliefs are formations of self-conscious minds, even as buildings are at another level. Beliefs direct, generate, focus, and harness feelings. In this context, then, feelings are being compared to mountains, lakes, and rivers. Ideas and beliefs bring about those obviously man-made structures that imply self-conscious minds and the ocean of interrelated social events. Feelings are still dependent upon your neurological structure and its impact with physical reality. An animal feels, but it does not believe. Your feelings, with their chemical interactions, have, beside their subjective reality to you, electromagnetic properties, as indeed your thoughts have. But your bodies must rid themselves of chemical excesses in the same way that land mass must clear itself of excess water. There are what I am going to call here quote-unquote ghost chemicals, aspects of normal chemicals that you have not perceived so far where certain thresholds are approached to which chemicals are changed into purely electromagnetic properties and energy released that directly affects the physical atmosphere. As your body is in a state of constant flux and chemical interaction, so is the atmosphere, which reflects on another level all of the psychic, chemical, and electromagnetic properties that exist within the body. There is little difference between the currents of blood that flow through your veins and the wind current except that one seems to be within you and the other without. Both are manifestations of the same interrelationship and motion, however. Your planet has a body as much as you have. Your blood follows certain prescribed patterns, and so does the wind. You are inside the body of the earth in those terms. As cells within your body influence it, so does your body affect the larger body of the earth. The weather faithfully reflects the feelings of the individuals in any given local territory. Overall weather patterns follow deeper inner rhythms of emotion. 
those in earthquake regions are attracted to such spots because of their innate understanding of the astonishing relationship between exterior circumstances and their own quite private mental and emotional patterns. Here you can find individuals of great energy, of unstable, quote-unquote, excessively temperamental natures, and with intense capacities for creativity and innovation. They need a strong stimulus or impact with reality against which to pit themselves, however. There is often a great impatience with social situations and unusual vitality. Such individuals operate at a high pitch and in mass emit inordinate excesses of what I have called ghost chemicals. Such emotional non-physical qualities are unstable and affect the deep electromagnetic integrity of the Earth's structure. Obviously, there have been earthquakes where there are no people, but in all cases, the origins are to be found in mental properties rather than exterior ones. Earthquakes are very often associated with periods of great social change or unrest, and from such locations the fault lines originate and are projected outward. They may then affect a general unpopulated area on another continent or an island, or cause a tidal wave on the other side of the world, even as a stroke might affect a portion of the body far from the original damage. You do not need a self-conscious mind to feel, and in the quote-unquote past, earthquakes represented the feeling patterns of species in the same way, unstable conditions of consciousness that in themselves initiated natural phenomena, further altering the state of consciousness and the conditions of the species as well. In your terms, consciousness is wedded with matter, and any of its experiences are physically materialized through that interaction. There are great correlations between thunderstorms and psychic storms, for example, and between unstable electromagnetic properties of both feeling and thought, the brain's ability to handle these, and its need to rid itself of excesses. You do not simply react to the weather. You help form it, even as you breathe the air and then send it outward again. The brain is a nest of electromagnetic relationships that you do not understand. In certain terms, it is a controlled storm. From it spring ideas that are quite as natural as lightning. When lightning strikes the earth, it changes it. There are also changes that come about through the impact of your thoughts upon the atmosphere. The great overall inner trust with which you were born forms the basis for the encompassing reliability of the physical earth. Your body dwells in the earth as you dwell in your body. You were born with a faith in your existence that automatically directed the proper functioning of your personal corporeal self. This provides the necessary stabilizing properties upon which your consciousness could play and through which it could effectively and creatively operate. The smallest atom has its own kind of built-in integrity upon which all of its organizations and alterations are based. So generally, there is a gestalt kind of permanence within the body of the earth. Yet with all of this, there is always change. As with the experience of time in a linear fashion, any event must quote-unquote knock out another one. In terms of your focus, a given occurrence quote-unquote takes time. You know that many events occur that you do not consciously perceive, but take on the word of others. In your terms, therefore, change is apparent. The body is altered. 